Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living and a return worth having. The challenge of a man who has an intelligent mind is that he is often utilized by people in a way that is appropriate for the individual who wants to utilize his skills, but not always marvelously important or invaluable to the person who does the work. It's sort of amazing how many people in life want everything for free. I once did some marketing for a woman who I really cared for. I cared for her so much that I made her a good five to seven videos about her work, about her life, about her opportunities to become a lot more in life. But she wasn't really understanding the cost or the time that it takes to develop video. Not only is there video or videography time in terms of capturing the footage of a person talking and ad-libbing in a video, but at the same time, there is amount of time of re-listening to those videos, editing those videos, cutting out the verbal pauses that are not appropriate to certain videos that literally is done very carefully with layering and other things over time. But at the same time, there is then the actual editing, the rendering, and the publishing of that video. You see, the value that she paid was nowhere near the cost that it took to develop seven some videos on that person's business and outlook at that time. At the same time there was graphic designs done for professional business cards that were current with the marketing standards at that moment in the history of marketing. When I talk about these things I am reminded about this because I spent a lovely evening once again with my little friend L, who is a college student whose life is not going incredibly well. But what she values about me in a fatherly figure or a priestly manner or a confessional, if you will, is the ability for her to process her emotions, to get through the difficulties, and to literally walk through the life of maturity, of moving from childhood to adulthood, which is something I've done for many children throughout their lifetime. You see, when you're an educator, when you're a professional trainer like me, you not only try to teach the value of what it is that you're trying to share with people, but you're also trying to add to their life, enhance their life, and literally allow the love and light of God to shine through you so that it impacts a life. There are many women who are quite accustomed to getting around on their looks. I know a friend who literally used to receive money from a hugely expensive or hugely famous man in a network marketing community. He literally would walk around with thousands of dollars in bills in his pocket, sort of in a way in a show-off manner where the, his wallet was almost three to four inches thick, thick of bills. But he'd always play up to her and hand her five dollar bills, she would tell the story, to say give these to your children. As a man, I was somewhat offended that she would receive it because I know what men of money like to do. We've seen it from our past president. That someone who's a man of means and a man of power and a man of authority and a man of leadership might play that towards a beautiful woman of the world in order to play a different role in her mind than he does for other people. All the while, he allows someone who's impoverished, like me or others, to stand with nothing at hand. When I tell these stories, I'm telling real-life experiences of having found my love of my life and having that love of my life literally ripped from my grasp by people who just didn't think such a relationship would last. The hardest part about the whole experience is that I can spend time in an evening with someone who's quite lovely or quite mature or quite immature in their soul. I've suffered through lunches with women I thought were beautiful on the outside only to find they were uglier than shit on the inside in terms of their aggressiveness, in terms of their inappropriateness, in terms of their lack of social graces. But here's the deal. When Jesus Christ picks a partner for you, you know it's real. When Jesus Christ teaches you that he can show you the signs of his house every single day for someone else, it's sort of off hook. It's the magic of God that we all live for. It's the magic of God knowing that God really loves us, God really hopes for us, God really cherishes us, and God really has planned for us. But when a monstrous man with four children moves in 
and plays a girl into sin, it's outlandish. It creates a, creates a rage in the Lord's house. You see, people don't want to realize that this hardship, this epidemic, this pandemic, this illness that is plaguing America and the rest of the world is something that literally came about from God. It is something that God has delivered to us because not enough people are in the house of the Lord. If we were doing more in life, if we were praying more in life, if we were really honoring people's lives, we would recognize who came into our life on a wing and a prayer and who was just there to be a bear to our children. You see, in life we have to take a look at who will raise us up, who will love us till the end of time, and who will look after our children if God chooses to teach us a lesson and take us before them, which typically happens in most concepts of family. But sometimes a man loses his wife because she's tired of him. Sometimes a man loses his wife because he's failed to honor her. And sometimes a man kills his wife because he's just done with her. And I'm not one of those people. I legitimately lost my wife for a lot of reasons. It was simply merely time. I wasn't getting where I wanted to go in life is not true. I was more than there in life before someone decided to attack my life, assault my name, and destroy every opportunity I had in life to do something different with my life. You see, there are monstrous people in this world who just think, I don't like what I'm seeing there and I'm just going to call police because it makes me feel good. What a fool you are to associate yourself with such a disparaging group of people. Such an ill-willed, such an inappropriate, such an unprofessional, such an untrained, such an illogical, such an sexually immoral group of men and women. I can say that without hesitation because of my experiences with them since 2012, when someone started to hack my cell phone and interfere with my right to make a living. I have lived through monstrous women in my own birth family, my own biologically related family. I have suffered through people who thought they would play with my life. But here's what we know about a liar. A liar always has a tell. And the tell slips out because they're too busy struggling in life, not at all, because they're too busy studying our lives, trying to be, make affinities with us in life so that they can win something in their own mind. But what they fail to realize is that God plans all relationships. And when we step outside of God's house, and pursue people who are actually a louse, we lose our life to sin. If you yourself are not in a house of the Lord today, I encourage you to go back and find one that will not keep you at bay. If you live in a house of the Lord where there's arrogance in the pulpit, I guarantee that arrogance is impacting your life. That type of a preacher is not a teacher. That type of a pastor is someone who will ruin your life disparage people who love you and literally destroy lives with his calls to police in inappropriate, illogical, and immoral opportunities. Most people forget that Jesus Christ was killed by the law enforcement centurion Roman soldiers of the day. We are in a world of COVID. We are in a time of pandemic. We are in a problem, not at all. We are facing the loss of life. We are facing the loss of children. We are facing illness. The truth is we face illness and those risks of cancers and other marvelous diseases every single motherfucking minute of the day and night we're alive. It is the Lord's right to take people home. It is the Lord's might that can save them. And it is also the Lord's opportunity to prove to people that he is in control of their lives. A woman who is not being controlled by God is a sinner, is what men of Christian houses might say. A man in a Christian house might say, I'm going to teach that man a lesson because I don't like what I'm hearing him wanting to lay. But let me explain something to you, you immoral bastards of Satan, that when you think you have the right to lord over someone's life, when you think you have the right to take someone else's wife, when you think you have the right to do things in someone else's life that you actually have no access by any socially appropriate means too. You have just put your entire family and lineage and legacy at risk of COVID. Jesus Christ is coming back every single day and how he shines his light through people 
is what we often say in a pagan home. A pagan home is really recognizing some of the works of old are actually factual. A pagan home is also recognizing that there still is a magic in the world, much like we might see in a classic film like Harry Potter or Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, where Jesus is ever-present every minute, but people often choose the satanic realm. They choose a life of sin, they choose to harm people again and again, and they choose in magnificent, monstrous ways to take away their own accountabilities and their own responsibilities for their own lives and their own situations by calling police on people they don't even know. In life, we have moments of time to speak absolute truth. And the absolute truth is if you are monkeying in someone's life, if you are stealing their property, if they're utilizing their intellectual work, if you are ruining their copyright to work that they've designed, and if you are deleting things on a computer like a jerk, you are facing a life in hell. The Lord God above does not like that today, and we knew that from the Ten Commandments of His day. You have failed yourself in adultery. You have failed yourself in coveting. You have failed yourself in theft. You have failed yourself in failing to be loving. And a failure as a wife is always a failure because she hasn't learned to love God first and foremost. But in a house of the Lord, in a pagan home, every child is loved. I literally spent the evening listening, hearing, and determining and helping someone to qualify the experiences she had had through an entire lifetime of emotional, psychological, and physical sexual abuse. It was very painful for her, but it allowed her to release her life into adulthood. When I share this part of the story, I'm not sharing information about who it was, what they said, or what they experienced. That is not my right. What I'm sharing with you is that people know a priest when they see one. They know a godly person when they feel one, and they know who is in the house of God and who has failed themselves and become rather odd. In life, we have moments of time to see the truth, and the truth is God always represents truth. But a person's truth is what God says the truth is, not what a man who knows nothing about that individual's life or life hand feels is true. Your feeling about another human being is not truth for him, nor is it truth for the Lord. The Lord has the right to determine the truths of his house, and the truth of his house rarely meet the standards of men. Men rarely in this world meet the standards of God, and any man that does not go to church is not in the house of the Lord. Any woman that marries a man who is not in church not being schooled, not being reared, not being mentored, not being trained on how to be a regular man who literally loves his children, honors and adores his wife, and never gives her any strife, has been a failure all his life. 